Hey guys, so if you are a virtual learner or you were watching this at home this week, please make sure to print off the papers that are in Canvas before you begin. Start by taking the pre-assessment. You do not need to look any of these up, please just write what you already know. Once you are done with that, you can move on to the PowerPoint notes. As you are watching the video, you will need to fill in all of these blanks. After finishing the video, you will work on this brainstorming and planning sheet. You will not be creating this artwork this week, you will just be planning for it so that we can begin that next week. But by Sunday at midnight, you do need to upload a picture of this sheet to Canvas. This week we are working on folk art. So first I want to talk about some different terms that we are going to be talking about for this project. So form versus shape. As an element of art, form is something that is three-dimensional and has volume, length, width, and height. While both of these sides are drawings, you can see on this side that these have form because you could measure the length, the width, and the height, whereas over here you can't do that because those are shapes. They are two-dimensional or flat. A form is a shape in three dimensions and like shapes can be geometric or organic. So this would be a very geometric shape right here, this square, whereas an organic shape might be something like a blob that's drawn. But the important thing to remember is that it is form when you can measure it in three different directions. So again, the width, the height, and the length, whereas over here I could only do the width and the height, so that one would just be shape, not form. Folk art. So this is art that is made by individuals whose creative skills convey their community's authentic cultural identity, rather than an individual artistic identity. So the artwork isn't so much about themselves as an individual, but their entire community. This landscape right here was created by an artist in Canada, and it was supposed to be of a street that was very significant in their area. So the people who lived there, if they saw this and were told that's what was being represented, it would mean something to them. And it's not something that is exclusive to this one artist. Everyone that lives there could feel a part of it. Down here, this bracelet, this is a Mexican tile bracelet. So tile art is a big thing in different parts of Mexico, and that is reflected in the jewelry. So this might be more special and personal to people that are from there than it would be to someone outside of that community. It may be learned formally, or informally. Folk art may also be self-taught. It may include forms of expressive culture including dance, song, and poetry. Since you can be a self-taught artist and be a folk artist, a lot of these artists did not go to college for it. It's not like they were professionally trained. However, they learned how to use these materials either from a mentor or on their own, and now they are using that type of art specifically to make art that reflects their community. It's not about them individually, but it is for everyone. Anyone could become a folk artist because it does not require that formal training. Pattern. This is one of our terms that's going to be really important for this project. It is a repetition of specific visual elements. In your project, you will use line, color, and shape in order to form your patterns. Mixed media. Mixed media art combines a variety of media in a single artwork, so different materials. For example, if you were to draw with ink, then paint over it with watercolors, then add some highlights in color pencil, that would be considered a mixed media artwork. The artwork you will be creating for this project will be mixed media. Culture. Culture is the characteristics and knowledge of a particular group of people encompassing language, religion, cuisine, social habits, music, and the arts. Culture influences what materials you have access to, so what's going to be in your environment to use, the artistic background that you have, meaning some students might not have had an art program at their school, others might have, so that background, the things that they learned, is going to vary depending on where you are located. Imagery, the things that you grew up seeing around you. Techniques used, so in some places people make art differently than other places. Access to technology, so can they look up different examples, different things that they would want to try in their artwork. Its purpose, so is it recreational, meaning it's art that's for fun. Functional, art that's going to be used, such as a bowl. Decorative, something that's just going to be on display. Celebratory, something made for an event, and so on. Down here you can see Muddy Waters, an important blues musician from Chicago. 
So this is a mural that's in Chicago, which is going to have more cultural significance to people from that area than from outside of that area. They're going to recognize him, and that's going to be meaningful. Up here, this is inside of an Iranian mosque. Its purpose could be considered functional or celebratory. It is a religious place where people go to worship, and you can see all of these artistic details in the ceiling, in the stained glass, in the floor. Those are artistic techniques that had to be passed down. It's part of their culture, and it's being used to make this building look very significant. Kentucky Folk Art Sculptures One place in Kentucky that is very well known for its artistic community is Berea. It is considered the arts and crafts capital of Kentucky for charming shops selling some of the finest folk art Kentucky has to offer, including pottery, weaving, hand-carved instruments, galleries, and more. Here are some examples of some folk art in Kentucky. On the left, this one is called Rhino by Harry Jenkins. This was a piece of wood that was chopped down. He did not try to make this look realistic. You could tell it did not require a whole bunch of artistic skill in order to create. Folk art can be self-taught, and that's what was happening here. Over here we have Large Red Fox by Minnie Adkins, and Minnie Adkins is a very famous folk artist in Kentucky. These are made out of wood and painted as well. While it may look like amateur art, it is highly valuable. One of her sculptures will sell for anywhere from $600 to $1,500. Here's some more folk art in Kentucky. So over here we have the barn quilt. These are culturally significant because they were made to honor Appalachian heritage as well as mothers. On the left, you can see this landscape titled Kentucky Farm Fields. So somebody that is from Kentucky would be able to recognize an image like this and maybe feel at home while looking at it. Marvin Finn. He was alive from 1913 to 2007. He was born in Alabama and moved to Louisville, Kentucky. He was a folk artist and his process was creating toys by carving wood. He came from a low-income family and so he started making toys for himself from wood as a child. Here are some of the sculptures that he created. Notice they have a lot of fun patterns on them, vibrant colors, and they didn't have to be perfect or realistic. His love of wood carving came from watching his father work with wood. Despite never having any formal art education, he did become a very successful artist. He spent many years making toys for his children and grandchildren as well. Flock of Fins Dozens of owners of Finn's original artwork presented those originals to the Mayor's Advisory Committee and 32 pieces were selected as models for a public art project. Colorful steel renditions, some as tall as 9 feet, were cut out of half-inch thick steel and they were painted with graffiti-proof paint by artists who were mimicking the unique colors and patterns of Finn's work. In April of 2001, the flock of Finns landed in the waterfront park in downtown Louisville. So here is that park where people can walk by and see these large versions of his artwork. While you do not need to make a sculpture that looks exactly like Finn's work, I do want you to focus on using patterns, bold colors, and being imaginative in your artwork. You are going to be creating a sculpture which showcases Kentuckian culture. You will need to decide what parts of Kentuckian culture you would like to represent in your project. And remember, this isn't about something that would only be culturally relevant to you as an individual. It is about Kentuckians as a whole, that community. Think about things that are relevant to more than just a few people. We will be using cardboard as our base for this project, so think about the way that you want to make your artwork stand up. Are you going to have something in the back that's propping it up? Is it going to be laid out in a way where it stands up without needing that support? Is it going to have another piece that needs to be attached to it? Think about how you are going to set up your artwork to be standing on its own. This sculpture is going to be a mixed media artwork as well, so we want to keep in mind you're using more than one type of art material in order to create it. So be thinking about would you like to use yarn on this project, construction paper, feathers, beads, what would you like to put on it? Since many folk artists are untrained, they're using the materials that are available to them. So if you are at home creating this artwork, feel free to use any materials that are available to you. You do not have to have anything specific in order to create this project. If you do not have cardboard at home, that is totally fine. You can substitute that for something else, such as poster board, thick paper, cereal boxes. You can use really anything. If you're in person with me, then I will of course give you cardboard, but if you are doing this at home, 
feel free to use whatever you have available to you, just like a real folk artist would do. I wanted to show you some artwork from some students who were fine with their artwork being shared from the school that I did my student teaching at. These students were sixth graders from Eastern Kentucky, and they created these projects using only the materials from home during our NTI days last spring. So notice they're all including all of these details that are important in Kentuckian culture, and we would recognize these as part of our culture as Kentuckians. Remember to upload a picture of your brainstorming and planning sheet by Sunday at midnight. You also need to go ahead and fill out the notes as well as the pre-assessment so that you can turn those in in person. You will not be completing this reflection until after we create the artwork, so do not worry about answering any of these questions this week. If there are any materials you would like to bring from home, you can write that right here. I might not have something specific that you would like to use, so if there is something you'd like to include, please make sure that you bring it with you for the following week. 